Welcome back to the Independent Republic of Mike Graham right here on Talk Radio. Dan Wooten back at four o'clock this afternoon, of course. Ian Collins in at one. We'll bring you all the latest news with Matt Hancock from the briefing uh, after around about five o'clock where he's going to be talking about the testing and tracing scenario. Right now, though, uh, it's time for our homeschooling section just after the 12.30 news, of course. And we welcome back Dr Jamie Frost, math teacher, finalist for the Global Teacher Prize 2020. Uh, we've had a very good session with him once already. Today, uh, we're going to talk about prime numbers because many of you might go what on earth is a prime number and what does it do um dr jamie very good uh, afternoon to you welcome back it's great to be back thank you for having me back not at all thanks very much indeed i mean there's more kids back at school i suppose now than there were when we last spoke but there's still plenty of them listening to this and uh, and hoping to learn something so so tell us first of all what is a prime number um, so imagine you've got like 20 people and you want to divvy them up into uh, football teams. Um, now, what's one way you could split those people into equally sized football teams? What could you do? Well, you could split them into two teams of 10 uh, or possibly four teams of five okay. or possibly. Um... That's right. And um, what? Go on. Yeah, you're right. And, and basically what you've identified is something called factor pairs. So 10 and two are a factor pair of 20 because you can split 20 into 10 lots of two or two lots of 10. Right. So 10 and two are factors of 20. And we'd say that 20 and two together are a factor pair of 20. Um, and the way I remember the word factor, by the way, is um, how we use it in the English language. Because if I said I uh, factored something into my decision, yes. I mean that that form part of my decision, just like four forms part of 20. It's a factor of 20. It's um, part of it, if that makes sense. Yes. Um, now, let's say I had 11 people and I wanted to split them into football teams. Uh, what, what would happen now? Well, now you're going to have somebody left out, aren't you? Because you're not going to be able to have an even number of, of, of people in, in, in a team. So one team is either going to have one more exactly. than everybody else. Yeah. And the only way you could do it is kind of if you had like 11 teams of one, or you had, um, even more ridiculously, one team of 11, which would be a pretty <laughs> rubbish game of football. Yeah. Uh, although probably better than the fact we have no football at the moment. Well, I was going to uh, say, so we'll, somebody, we'll get. somebody would probably still watch it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would imagine so. Um, but um, we can see that 11 is not very nicely divisible. It doesn't have any factors except for one, because you can always divide anything by one, yeah. and itself, because you can divide 11 into 11 without anything left over. Right. So we say that 11 is a prime number because its only factor pair is one and itself. You can right. only divide it by one itself, right. and it has no other factors. Right. Whereas 20, which we had before, had lots of factors. It had one, two, four, five, 10, right. uh, 20, etc. Right. So that's ultimately uh, what a prime number is. Um, and Prime numbers are useful in everyday life um, when um, it, it gives a notion of, of how divisible something is and how good it is at sharing. Mm. So take our currency, for example. We have 100 pennies in a pound, um, and 100 has a lot of factors, which means it can be divided up into smaller coins, like 10p, 20p. Whereas prime numbers are like the opposite, is when we can't share something nicely without having something left over, if that makes sense. Yes. Um, it's also hugely important in technology. So if you use WhatsApp, for example, that uses end-to-end -end encryption. So when you type in a message, it's encrypted in a way to kind of scramble the message and then decrypted when it comes to the other end so they can read your message. Um, and if I was to just say pick uh, two prime numbers, like say 71 and 97, um, and I was to multiply them together, I get, well, I've done my calculator earlier, I get 6,887. Now, I can easily do that on my count page. I can just times those numbers together and I get 6887. Right. But actually, if I said, okay, I've got 6887, what were the two numbers that multiplied to give it? Then, believe it or not, in maths, that's really hard to do. No one's managed to work out a good way of working out what two numbers, what two prime numbers multiplied yeah. to give that number I told you, the 6887. And that forms like the, the kind of basis of uh, encryption, like one to one. Uh, this kind of end-to-end -end encryption that we use on, say, WhatsApp. So prime numbers are hugely important technology. They're kind of important in, in everyday life. Right. Um, and it, it's a huge part of maths. So, um, so, so a little task for you now. OK, I was just, let me just ask you a question. First. So it's a kind of a, almost a coding thing as well, then, presumably. Because if you are you telling me that if you multiply two prime numbers together, the resulting number is not a prime number? Um, it won't be a prime number because, for example, if I Can't multiply be, um, 71 and 97 together, 
then that number will be divisible by, it will have factors of 71 and 97. But it's the, the point is, it's very hard to find out what those factors were in, unless I told you that yes. I'd multiplied 71 of them together. And because you can't, and, and obviously we deal with much bigger numbers because a computer can easily work out what the factors of 6,887 is. But if I gave you a gigantic, like 50 digit number, mm. a computer would have a much harder uh, time trying to work out what those two numbers were. And that forms a part of, uh, a part of uh, mass called group theory. Um, and that in turn forms part of encryption. So kind of computer science and maths are really kind of interlinked. Right. A lot of stuff we do in computer science computing uses a lot of very uh, high level mathematics. Mm. So you were about to uh, give me a task, I sense. Hopefully it's not too difficult. Yeah, yeah. I've got a few numbers here for you. So I've got 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. I'll make sure it's visible right. on the screen. Do I need and to I write want these you down? To work out. Uh, yeah, it may help. And I basically want you to work out 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Yeah. Which of those numbers are the prime numbers? Right. Well, 15 uh, can be divided by more than itself and one. So that's not a prime number. Yeah. 16 yeah, is. You can the... divide by five and three. Yeah. So six, that is. 16 is the prime. same. I would say 17 is a prime number. That's right. You can't divide up 17 yeah. in any way. I would say um... 18 is not a prime number. That's right. Any even number except for two is never going to be prime okay. because you can always divide it by two. Right. So I would you say so I would two. say um, 17 and 19 are the two prime numbers. That's right. You're absolutely correct. Well done. So you obviously understand prime numbers because you've correctly identified the two prime numbers. Well done. Yeah. Excellent. Well, thank you very much. Now, how about this? If I multiply two prime numbers together, 2 and 11, I get 22. That's not a prime number. Yep. So is that then the case of all of these things that you, you know, I know I asked you this before. If I multiply two prime numbers together, the resulting number is never a prime number. That's right, of course, because when you multiply 2 and 11 to get 22, 22 will have factors of 2 and 11, won't it? Yes, it will. But let me ask you this. I mean, you've sort of explained about how important prime numbers are to mathematical um, equations and, and in a way to coding and to encryption and all of that. But to kind of basic uh, ch for children listening to this who are maybe either struggling with their maths or trying to figure out how important this is to their learning process, how important is it for mm. people to understand prime numbers, you know, just for general sort of day to day life? Um, it's it, it can be it has a lot of applications in everyday life. So one thing um, it can be used to do if you find something known as a prime factorization of a number. So um, students who've done this at the school will see it kind of like splitting a number into sort of like a, a tree, um, where, and they end up with prime numbers at the bottom. So this is in the, the main school curriculum. But you can then use that to find something um, called the lowest common multiple of a number. Uh -huh. So if you had say two buses and one bus came every say 15 minutes and the other bus came every 10 minutes. Um, then you might wonder, well, how often do the buses come together? Mm. So they would come together every 30 minutes because one comes at 15 minutes past, 30 minutes past, etc. The other comes at 10 minutes past, 20 minutes past, 30 minutes past. So 30 is the lowest common multiple of 50 and 10. And if you use the prime factorization of these numbers, um, it makes it easier to work out that lowest common multiple. And the mm. example I gave, it was pretty easy to work out what that multiple was, the common yeah. multiple. Right. But for larger numbers, is much harder and prime numbers gives us a, a way to kind of systematically work that out right interesting i mean i suppose in that bus scenario and this is where you will start to find me extremely irritating um there might be a situation where they would never come together depending on when they started oh that's true yeah so if one uh, if they each came every 10 minutes but one came at two minutes past and one came at four minutes past then yeah. you're right they they would never overlap so sometimes they over, they would overlap and sometimes they don't. But if they both came at the same time at some point, um, then it, even if they're going at different intervals, one at, say, five minutes and one at 11 minutes, mm. they'll be at some point in the future when they'll arrive together again. Yes. Although presumably if they were trying to navigate the streets of London, they'd all be held up by the cyclists and the myriad number of traffic <laughs> yeah. lights. So, you know, you'd probably be waiting a long time, to be honest. <laughs> But listen, Dr. Jamie, brilliant as ever. Thank you very much indeed. Dr. Jamie Frost, a maths teacher, brilliant maths teacher, by the way, finalist for the Global Teacher Prize 2020. No wonder, because he makes it all seem so straightforward. So if you didn't know what prime numbers were before, you should now. And now you know why they're so important. You couldn't send a WhatsApp message if we didn't have them. Simple as that. This is Talk Radio.